Should you buy a 14 inch M4 MacBook Pro or a 16 inch? Well, in this video, I'm gonna compare everything from the design and size to the displays and of course performance because we do have a difference in chips. For $2,000, you get the Bind M4 Pro, but for $2,500, you get the Unbind chip. So you guys saw the full specs right there. But with that, if you're getting a 14 inch for just 200 bucks more, you can actually get the same chip that comes in the 16 inch I'm gonna show you guys the performance difference as well as the battery life difference because both these laptops are charged to 100% and I'm gonna go ahead and unplug them so we're gonna see what we get with the larger battery now I just made sure that both of them are set to high power mode which is cool that we get that with the M4 Pros now helps the fans to spin up a little bit earlier and higher to keep them cool and the first thing I want to talk about is the weight and the size the M4 Pro weighs 3.5 pounds compared to 4 4.8 and can you notice that difference well absolutely you can you also notice the size difference and I think the easiest way to decide about the size is if you travel a lot and you use your laptop on the airplane the 14 inch is way easier to use but if you just put it in a bag and you're using it on a desk I love the extra screen size of the 16 inch especially if you do video editing I would go with the 16 based on size but for photo editing and a lot of web use the 14 inch is just fine and now I want to go ahead and take off these bottom covers because you're not only paying for that more powerful chip but also some other upgrades along with the extra size so as you guys could see right here one thing you're paying action for are the larger fans and that larger block so all of it right here the heat pipes the heat sink where the air blows out the fans are quite a bit bigger because they have more size to play with and that's going to help it run quieter and possibly cooler we will see the speakers are also larger so I'll let you guys listen to a sound comparison and the battery size is much bigger 99.6 watt hour the pretty much the most you can get on an airplane that's 37 percent larger than the 14 inch and now let's go ahead and compare the speakers Okay guys, this was interesting. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I feel like Apple boosted the highs in the 14 inch to make it louder to compete better. Um, the 16 inch, it sounds more neutral, more balanced, and it has a lot more bass. And I have to say, watching movies on the 16 inch with the larger display and better speakers, I mean, the experience is awesome, but the 14 inch is still good. Now, getting into performance differences, you guys could see that we have 12 cores compared to 14, and that means we have two extra performance cores on the M4 Pro, and with that, we have 16 graphics cores compared to 20, and of course, you can get the same M4 Pro on the 14 inch for an extra $200 upgrade. Now I'm gonna do this video a little bit different because I wanna talk about fan noise and with the new M4 lineup of chips, these are the loudest Apple Silicon MacBooks that we've ever had. And looking at the fan speeds, well, the lowest that the M4 Pro can run is 2317 RPM compared to 1350 on the 16 inch because they move so much more air in those larger fans. And they also run about 2000 RPM higher on the 14 inch to make up for the smaller fans. So I'm gonna run the 10 minute Cinebench test to max out the CPUs and we are gonna pay attention to what happens. Both of these systems are starting to heat up and as you guys could see, we're using a lot more power, 48 watts on the 16 inch compared to 36. The 14 inch is already starting to slow down right here compared to 16 inch, which is holding its performance. Now both are heating up, the fans are starting to run, but my 14 inch is at 104 degrees Celsius compared to 101 with fans that are running slower. As you can see, the 16 inch clock speeds have been consistent where the 14 inch have wavered a bit. And using our thermal camera, the 16 inch is at 33 degrees Celsius whereas the 14 inch is at 38, a lot hotter. And after about five minutes, the 14 inch fans are running about twice as fast as the 16 inch, and it has a high pitch, louder sound compared to 
a very minor hum on the 16. And keep in mind, we have two extra performance cores here sucking more power and it's quieter. So if you upgrade your 14 inch to the um, unbin chip, well, it's gonna be throwing down a little bit and the fans will be fully maxed out. And that is why we don't really recommend getting an M4 Max on a 14 inch. And looking at the final results, we have an impressive 1680 on the 16 inch compared to 1386, which is still good. Now, if you upgrade it, it's probably not gonna reach this level, it'll get close. And I wanna say we've always had a difference in fan noise, but this year it's just quite a bit bigger than it was before. Now getting into Geekbench 6, I'm gonna go ahead and run this and we will see what kind of difference we have for a variety of regular workloads. So here are the results and as you see, the single core score is practically identical and as far as multi-core, we only have a difference of about 12%. That is not very high, unlike Cinebench, where it was over 20%. So if you're not using a program that just maxes out your CPU, well, the extra cores don't don't help that much for regular productivity tasks. And we're gonna run a few more tests to show you guys the difference in those. But first, let me show you a battery backup power system from our partner Anchor with their Solix F3800, which has the best battery tech out there. This system could be used as a standalone device for on the go with 3800 watt hour and 6000 watt rating with full AC power and both 120 volt and 240 volt for your whole house or an RV camper or use as a power backup for your entire house while using clean energy. The best part is that it's completely portable, so you could take it camping or move it to any part of the house for an emergency power and with two large wheels and two smaller ones that can lock so it won't move around while stationary. It comes with a ton of ports and on the side, we have a solar panel connection that you could add to the system at any time. And on the other side, we have the connections for EV chargers, RV hookups, and six regular 120 volt outlets. The battery technology in the Solix is really high tech using EV class LFP batteries that are really reliable with 3000 charge cycles, which is nuts. Anchor provides a five year warranty with Infinity Power, and the Solix should last you 10 years if you use it daily. So for home backup and camping trips, you'll have no problems with it. And another nice thing is that you can actually charge your electric vehicle directly from the Solix, giving you 3.8 kilowatt hours of capacity. So in a pinch, this will be a lifesaver. At the front of it, we have this ambient light and this beautiful display that shows you all of the current information and your charging status, watt hours used, and the amperage and what's nice is that you have three 100 watt USB-C ports, two USB-A ports, and a car socket for any and all types of connections. This thing is crazy powerful and very versatile and also expandable to gain more capacity and with solar power addition you'll have power perpetually. And Anchor is having the best Black Friday sales for the Solix F3800 so use our links in the description and pinned comment below to check it out. This is Figma right here, a web based design application. This project is brought to us by 500 Designs, one of the best design studios in California. And here, I mean, everything is gonna be ridiculously smooth. Let me go ahead and zoom in right here. Super smooth. The systems are gonna be identical because they have the same single core performance. And now I have 12 of these high resolution layers selected and we are gonna go ahead and export all of these and see the differences. All right guys, so both machines actually took one minute and nine seconds. So for web applications, you literally are not gonna see any difference whatsoever. And this did use some graphics, use some multi-core, a lot of single core. So if you do web apps and simple tasks, it's not worth spending the extra 200 bucks upgrading the 14 inch. Now, what about Xcode? Well, the crazy thing is that both of these took the same 106 seconds to do our benchmark project. And honestly, I was not expecting that. And I'm starting to think that if you use mainly CPU tasks, well, it's not really worth getting the chip in here, spending the extra money and possibly having more fan noise when you do really push it. So now let's go ahead and get into the graphics differences because we do have four extra graphics cores. All right, wow guys, we have 101,000 compared to 112. That's only an 11% difference. Um, I was expecting 
quite a bit more, honestly, with all those extra graphics cores. Now, of course, this is general compute performance uh, that a lot of applications use, but let's take a look at gaming. This is 3D Mark Steel Nomad Lite. It's gonna put a nice gaming load on the system with the latest graphics. And looking at the scores, we have 49.8 compared to 58.1 FPS. So that's about 17% more frames per second, which is better, but that still doesn't match up to the extra 25% more cores with the Unbind M4 Pro chip. And here I have Blender opened up. We are gonna render this tough project and this is gonna really push the graphics to the max. And oh my goodness, guys, the bin 14 inch took 48 seconds compared to 46 seconds on the 16 inch unbin. Just a couple seconds difference here. Wow, I'm really starting to wish that Apple made a bin version of the 16 inch for less money. That is wild. We've always had a big difference um, that was worth it. Plus you get the larger size. This time around the 14 inch M4 Pro Bind is like an overpowered chip for the money. It's doing such a good job. And now if there's gonna be any chance for the 16 inch to really show what it could do, it's gonna be in photo editing. I have Lightroom Classic open up right here, bunch of edited raw high resolution photos. And this is gonna use both the CPU and the graphics and the RAM. Now I could already tell you as far as editing, there's gonna be no difference based on the previous tests. But as far as exporting these 500 photos, I can see that the bin has a CPU maxed out, graphics almost maxed out. So I'm hoping that because of all the extra cores, the 16 inch unbind will actually help. All right guys, the 14 inch took longer, four minutes, 59 seconds, compared to four minutes and 11 seconds. So yes, you save a tiny bit of time. That's a 19% difference. But honestly, I was expecting a little bit more when we're using CPU and graphics, all those extra cores. And I think it might come down to the 16 inch, maybe having a little bit less clock speeds when you have more cores. Whereas this thing just boosts it up a little higher. That's my guess, uh, because the difference is probably the most disappointing I've seen in a while when you are spending extra money across all those tests. Now I do have one more thing to test out and that's gonna be video editing for your regular 4K projects, even with film grain applied, multiple LUTs color corrections. You guys could see that even a 14 inch is only using 10% of CPU, 30% of the graphics, because these processors are so fast, they have great decoders and coders, that you're not gonna see any difference. Both will be perfectly smooth with the footage that most people work with. And when you're exporting, both take exactly two minutes to do so because they have the same exact encoders, which are the limitation. And even with tough 4K 60 raw footage here, the 14 inch is handling it just fine for playback where my old Intel Mac Pro would just stutter like crazy. Uh, so that is impressive. Now, before I export this, let me just go ahead and do a timeline render. Say if you stack more effects than what I have here with my LUT color corrections. If you have to render your timeline, let's hit start here. I'll set my timer. And finally, I'm starting to see some difference. The extra graphics cores are definitely being used here. Bam, all right, finished up. And we have a difference of four seconds. 44 seconds compared to 48. Wow, guys, uh, this is the smallest difference I've ever seen between a 14 and a 16. Uh, if you're you know, getting the extra size and the extra performance from the upgraded chip in all of the lineup from M1, M2, M3, and now M4. Crazy, and of course, exporting this out would be the same exact time now that we rendered it. So the graphics difference in the real world is a lot less than I would expect, and it's just blowing my mind. Now, what about the battery life difference? Well, we have 46% on the 14 inch and 49% on the 16 inch, which is also a smaller difference than I feel like we had in the past. I think the 16 inch used to have a bigger gap, but it'd have better battery life. Of course, we would have pushed these a lot. And what it seems like is with the unbent chip, we have a lot more cores. And of course we have the larger display, but those cores are pushed higher with wattage, less efficient overall. And so the battery life is drained more so. So that is crazy. 
That is absolutely crazy. I thought we'd have at least maybe 15% difference in battery life, but we don't. Um, yeah, very interesting. So if you're trying to decide in terms of performance, if the unbin chip is worth it, no way whatsoever is it worth it. I would not do it. Now, if you have to get the unbin because you have, you because you want to get a 16 inch, and you're trying to decide between sizes, well, of course you're doing that anyways. And of course with this, we have the better speakers. We have the larger screen, which is great for video editing, um, especially if it's your main machine. Uh, but for $19.99, you're getting such a killer value and such killer performance now uh, with the M4 Pro bin version. I mean, that is such a nice laptop. And if I was gonna have one, a uh, setup where I have, you know, a display at my desk and then on the go, I'm using the screen. I mean, 500 bucks cheaper. You can buy a monitor, maybe I'll spend a little bit more on some accessories. This is the best bang for the buck laptop that Apple is selling right now and probably the best in years. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Click that circle above to subscribe. We have some great videos right over there. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next one.